Are you looking for one of the smallest 100 amp hour lithium batteries that you can get your hands on? Let's go look at the Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour mini battery. So here it is. This is a battery that I've tried to get my hands on actually for quite some time. I did a comparison about a year ago of the different specs of batteries. And this one came out as the smallest best pick mini battery. And this truly is a mini battery in every sense of the word. Um, let's start with that. So the overall size of the battery, 10 inches wide, 5.2 inches deep, 7.8 inches tall. So it's very, very small, just over 400 cubic inches. And you really want to make sure you're looking at that volumetric space when you're comparing a mini battery to make sure you're getting, you know, the tightest package that you can get, especially if you're very size sensitive, like a kayak, or you're trying to squeeze in another battery into a rod locker or something like that. And if you want a really small battery, make sure you're looking at it because mini isn't really a standard of any type, like a group 24 or group 31. Mini is just whatever they think is small or smaller than the other batteries they have. Um, this one is extremely tiny. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention is you can see this isn't flat on the top. The terminals are recessed into the top. I'm assuming it's the BMS that's right up here in this little void here. And that could be viewed good or bad. Um, it's good because you can't really cross your wrench if you're trying to tighten it up. So that's, that's nice. Uh, but if you're trying to put two of these in series and you've got some jumpers, you really only have this 90 degree angle to work in for your lugs. And that could make some extended wiring versus just a short one that crosses over directly over the top of the battery. Not a big deal, not even a concern if you're using just one battery, really only for multiple batteries in series in a tight space. Let's take a quick look on how it compares to this Group 31 so you can get a feel for the, the mininess of the battery. As you can see, that's, that thing is very tiny. Um, the other thing I wanna mention is the weight of the battery. On the side, it says 22 pounds. My scale says just under 21. So that puts it, uh, you know, just about two pounds lighter than a Group 24 100 amp hour lithium and well over 25 pounds lighter than like a lead acid battery. So you're, getting, you're saving a whole bunch of weight, obviously going to lithium and doubling the capacity compared to a, a same size uh, lead acid. You know, the, the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is obviously here to stay and it's a very cost effective way to put a bunch of capacity energy storage on your boat or your vessel, your RV, your solar setup, whatever it is, lithium probably has a fix for you. Um, so it's got uh, excellent cycle life, thousands of cycles depending on the depth of discharge. You probably know that if you follow this channel for any length of time. We talk a lot about cycle life. Um, the weight, the energy density is fantastic. So of course, lithium batteries always come with a battery management system. They've got low voltage, high voltage, low temp, high temp protections. They've got uh, overcurrent protection, which we'll talk about here in a second. And they've got some short circuiting protections as well. For a mini battery, this is also pretty unique because it has low temperature charge protection. If you're not aware, you definitely don't want to charge your lithium batteries when they're frozen. You can, uh, you can experience some lithium plating which overall affects the lifetime and capacity of the battery forever. You can't get that back. So nice set of protection suite within the battery. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the garage for some battery testing. Now we're going to do a little bit of bench testing with the battery. I've already done a full capacity test on it. So we fully charged it, ran a 10 amp load on it. And that gives us a baseline of the overall capacity and what you can get out of it. And it came in at 106 amp hours, which is fantastic. It's a 100 amp hour battery. That's what you're paying for. You're getting 106 out of it. That's also nice because when you're running any numbers or calculations on how big of a battery you need, you can also you know, say, I can get a whole 100% out of it because I'm probably gonna get 104, 106, somewhere in that range, a little bit over 100. So that's nice. You got some headroom there from a capacity standpoint. We are going to go ahead and reference our manual on what the rating is so we don't mix that up. Max discharge current at 100 amps. So what should happen? After we get, we're gonna pull a load on it and I'm gonna pull more than 100 amps on it. And eventually it should kick out that battery. It should say, nope, too much, it's over my rating. No mas, fix whatever's going on. Let's jump over to the test rig. So this is a pretty basic setup when it comes to testing a battery. And what we have here is a 2000 watt inverter. That's gonna be doing a couple things for us. It's gonna be our main load source. That's gonna be represented by this screen here. Then we have this guy here, and this is our Hall effect sensor. That's this guy here. And so that's gonna count every electron that's coming out of this positive cable into the inverter. And this amp rating is what we're gonna be paying attention to during our test. We're gonna get that number over 100 and see what happens. After it gets over 100, I'm gonna start the timer. That's gonna happen pretty quickly, especially with one of these heaters that we have over here. These guys obviously are gonna get warm. 
So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to turn this guy on and this should peak over 100 pretty quick. 122. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let this run for probably a minute and then um, we can add a second heater if we need to to really push it and see where it disconnects. So 1600 watts coming out of the battery there. All right, we're coming up to a minute. No disconnect. Let's add some more heat. 165, 170, 173. We may run out of inverter. 180, we're pushing 2200 amps out of my 2000 watt, 2200 watts out of that inverter. Almost two, do I hear 200? 200 amps. We've been over 100 amps for a minute and a half now. This guy is getting pretty warm on me. 247 amps. I'm going to run out of inverter. Okay, we're going to stop it there. Let's go ahead and let it hit two minutes. We're back down to 162. 165. Yeah, we're getting pretty pretty crispy here. All right, full two minutes and 30 seconds. Well over 100 amps in three, two, one. We're gonna stop it right there. Well, not quite what I was hoping for. So like I said, the rating on it per the manual is 100 amps. We pushed over 130 amps for two and a half minutes. Uh, and I saw 211 amps, I think, at one point when both heaters were running. Uh, that's a lot. And um, definitely make sure that your circuit protection is there like it's supposed to be on any installation. Definitely make sure you've got the proper wiring, all these things. These wires are getting hot. And um, that is our testing. You know, if you're finding this valuable to you, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right back over to it. All right, so there's the battery testing. You know, as, with, as I mentioned, make sure you got your circuit protection on there. Um, honestly, I have lots of batteries, tested lots of these. They either work or they don't. And um, that particular feature, it's probably something that I didn't test. Maybe it's over 200 amps for 90 seconds, whatever it is. There's usually some threshold in the BMS that's not always clear. Uh, but it's this one. I tested it at well over 100 amps, and that's the result that you ended up with. All things said... Still one of the very smallest batteries you can get. It has a full 10-year warranty on it. Make sure you activate it through the website. I've got links in the description down below if you'd like to check those out. Make sure you post up any questions. Uh, of course, like and subscribe to the channel if you're interested in doing that. Also, make sure you check out this video next. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>